Welcome back, this is UX Live. In this episode, I'm hosting um, Shide Kagarama, a product designer. All right, so as usual, I'm going to be asking him some question about product design. He'll be providing the answers. By the end of the video, if you have any question for him, feel free to drop them down to the comment section. Yeah, so Jill, you can start by telling us about yourself and what you do. Yeah, um, so as I mentioned, my name is Jire Kagarama. I'm a product designer. Okay. Um, well, um, I've been in this industry of product designing, uh, but before um, I was a software engineer, which I also I do, uh, but occasionally. Okay. Um, and um, I think it, help, it helps me in the process of product designing. Because uh, by the end of the day, uh, you need to understand uh, the user, the user part, the business, but also how um, different designs are going to be implemented in the real world, like in the coding. Yeah, mm, yeah I see. Uh, speaking of that, have you ever designed the product and then developed it by yourself? Um, yeah, yes, I did. Uh, but I think it wasn't a good idea because uh, by the end of the day, um, like you don't um, have much time to explore different um, different concepts, different ideas, and you just want to um, uh, to put it on the market. Uh, and also another challenge when, because mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm a software engineer and product designer, uh, you end up not doing one of them. So better you focus on one, and mm -hmm. uh, if you want maybe help from someone else, you bring someone else in. Yeah. So I did, but um, I think I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, at least you, you learn from it. Yeah, sure. Okay. So the next question will be, from your journey as a product designer, what are the biggest challenges you faced and how did you overcome them? My biggest uh, challenge maybe I can share is uh, to get into the um, blockchain industry because it was totally new to me. Um, so. Uh, I had to uh, develop or design and deliver, um, but also understanding uh, new uh, target audience, mm -hmm. which was totally new to me, mm -hmm. but also um, trying to understand the like different concepts, different flow, which are um, totally different when you compare to the rest of uh, other uh, industries like FinTech or uh, SaaS or something else. So it's quite different. So um, expecting me to deliver mm -hmm. uh, in a quite short time mm -hmm. and also uh, without those knowledge, mm -hmm. it was quite um, um, challenging. So what I did is um, I tried to spend much time learning uh, what's new in that industry, uh, like different concepts, trying to understand what's really going on uh, mm -hmm. on that mm -hmm. side. Yeah. yeah, so the next question will be, how is your design process like from the point you get an idea mm. up to the product being used by users? Yeah, so um, the process is, um, well, my process is I always start with uh, meeting stakeholders, can be clients or maybe uh, if it's an in-house product. Mm -hmm. So I meet with stakeholders, uh, we try to um, to uh, come up with uh, the product requirements. Um, uh, and understanding the business, what is required. Um, and after that, I uh, just sit and, and try to explore, um, let's say like searching, uh, conducting some researches, some uh, mm -hmm. surveys, understanding uh, uh, how that specific product can be um, uh, matched with the, the use case. Okay. And also trying to understand um, because every single product is totally different when you compare to others. Mm -hmm. So I try to understand uh, those different um, concept ideas. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, I can go ahead and start sketching depending on the um, UX, UX findings. Okay, uh, I start sketching. Just a piece of paper and a, and a pen. Oh, you, you know. prefer paper? Yeah, I prefer paper. Okay. Yeah, so I go classic. <laughs> <laughs> so I sketch. Mm -hmm. um, and then after coming up with um, a general idea of how to present data, mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, can go ahead and start designing um, high fidelity um, by coming up with high fidelity designs because uh, at that point I know well I have uh, the user flow mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know what the user needs Okay. And I also understand the business requirements. So, um, uh, and then I try to fill the gap between uh, business requirements and user requirements. And then I design um, high fidelity and then I come up with, uh, let's say like a, a live prototype. Uh, from there, um, I can say, well, I have something to show. I have something mm -hmm. to present. Like people can give me uh, feedback. Because I believe that um, whatever I think, well, if I'm coming up with something, it's not, um, it is not going to be like a, a rocket science, you know. Yeah. So I need ideas from um, other perspectives, you know, and I get feedback and then I address them. After that, once we come up with uh, like a final product, Mm -hmm. um, developers can go ahead and start um, developing, but also um, when pushing some pairs while uh, like delivering the code, mm -hmm. I can go ahead and leave you because uh, by the end of the day, I want to make sure that if maybe let's say uh, come up with um, a way of handling buttons or mm -hmm. maybe a way of uh, handling uh, typography, I want to make sure that uh, how it is being uh, implemented is mm -hmm. the way that we we, we, we want okay um, so I review uh, the code and also uh, provide guidance to, to developers oh you even do call review yes yes I do that's perfect yeah um, and then after that um, the last the last point is when it's on the market mm -hmm. then um, I always observe how people are interacting with the product. Yeah, that's the whole process. So by the observation, do you have any tools you use or...? Um, oh, well, not really. Um, sometimes I come up with a, a test flow, you know, test plan, mm -hmm. and um, write some questions or uh, guide people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for um, uh, some, some target people that I want uh, to... I want them to help me to, to test, okay? okay? Um, but also... Um, there is some other um, statistics, like for instance, when you uh, you integrate Google Analytics in your mm -hmm. platform, mm -hmm. so you observe like um, why people are not using Chrome. Okay. Is there any specific uh, okay. issue? Because if I'm designing like uh, using my Mac, maybe people are not going to use my Mac. Okay, okay? so I need to check uh, different behaviors mm -hmm. uh, so that I well I know how to address those uh, those issues. Yeah. So that's the that's the flow. Okay, yeah. it's quite it's quite interesting. So, yeah. do you think all the steps from prototyping, uh, high fidelity designs, etc. Do you think it's necessary to follow those steps, or sometimes you just skip some depending on the situation? Well, um, sometimes you work under pressure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, because of maybe um, being able to handle uh, multiple uh, multiple concerns, if I can say, so even though I'm going to um, to design wireframes like low fidelity designs, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean I'm skipping. So I can take a piece of paper and then I try to come up with something in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so even though like uh, my colleague are not going to see that paper, but, but you, you have it yeah, already. yeah, I already have it, you know. Yeah. 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 So um, skipping is not a, an option. Okay. Thank you very much. I think the standards are there for just the reason. Yeah. That's why you should always follow them. So the next question will be, um, how is your, like, how do you get inspiration? Yeah, um, so inspirations, um, I can cat categorize them in two uh, types, mm -hmm. uh, two resources. Okay. The first one is on the side of stakeholders and my team. Mm -hmm. So trying to get ideas is just this, the first step of uh, the first resources, you know. Mm -hmm. So as we are uh, exchanging ideas, mm -hmm. I also get some inspiration. Uh, so if I'm not catching something, Mm -hmm. Someone else will catch it and then I know down. 
Mm-hmm. That's one. The next, um, the second one is is uh, online resources, and um, maybe I can mention some like Dribble platform, mm-hmm. uh, 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 some other platforms like uh, sometimes uh, Instagram. It's weird, but <laughs> you can uh, scroll and you see something like a, a logo or something, and you are like, yeah, this one. Let me just note it down. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. later on, you can save it. Yeah, you yeah. can save it. Yeah, yeah. What <laughs> tip? You've worked on something day and nights, and then let's assume it's a logo or a, an app. And then at the end of the day, if you present it to the client, it says like, "This design is not it." Like, how do you deal with it? How do you deal with those kind of negative feedbacks? Yes, so I think it happens a lot, mm-hmm. and um, that shows me that maybe I need to come up with different options, because by the end of the day. Um, I don't design for myself. I design for users. Mm-hmm. So um, and also uh, by targeting users, uh, making sure that I'm um, making sure uh, like the, the the product we are coming up with is going to be useful. But also I have to um, meet client expectation. Okay. So um, I need to fill that gap by coming up with different options mm-hmm. so um, and also it shows me that maybe i need to uh, to go back and uh, conduct some other researches and come up with other ideas and provide uh, more options so by providing more options mm-hmm. you are going to give me um, your point of view mm-hmm. and i build on top of uh, your ideas mm-hmm. and uh, what i came up with before that's how i deal with it okay that is very perfect. So uh, the thing is, so most of the designers, we tend to make those kind of comments personal, but mm. based on what you said, I think it's it's yeah. best to, to go that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's not for us. Um, whatever we come up with, mm. um, I'm not going to like to uh, to design something and I use it myself. So that's why um, I'm always open for those kind of uh, ideas, and uh, that's what makes you a good product designer. I see. Then lastly, uh, if you weren't a designer slash a developer, because you mentioned <laughs> you can do both design and coding, uh-huh. so what other career should you should have pursued? Well, it's really difficult because, um, uh, like, I have to mention software engineer because uh, uh, mm-hmm. I've been like developing, mm-hmm. um, pushing some code. Mm-hmm. Um, so without those two careers, maybe I would do some some researches about how people think and how people can interact with with product which is still it's, in in the same it's, industry because uh, yeah yeah, you know. yeah is there any, no any other career any other career because you look like a sports person uh, <laughs> I don't <know>. maybe retiring <laughs> and just chill somewhere you know yeah. i don't know if it can make money you know but uh well, any other industry, because uh, I always tend to uh, to to think of something that um, user can can uh, be okay with, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whatever the the flow. Well, like I always tend to make sure uh, user are okay. Mm. Um, I don't know why, but yeah. <laughs> it's all about the users. Huh? Yeah, it's all about users. Maybe um, UX research still. Still the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that's it. So thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with us. So okay. that is the end of this episode. If you guys have any other questions for Gilles, feel free to drop it under the comment section. So see you in the next episode.